Hey, I'm Tommy, and you don't need a studio to make videos for YouTube. I mean, the way I started was just my home office, and the way many others start is the same way, or they use a bedroom, or just another place. Your YouTube studio is just the place where you make videos. I mean, that's what it really comes down to, is having a dedicated space where you can sit down and record video, or make content. Now, when you have to rearrange all your furniture every time you want to make a video, it can be a really time-consuming process, and, you know, you might, might just not want to do that. But if you have space set aside to make video, it's a lot easier to just turn everything on, hit record, and start talking. So this is my space that I use to sit down and hit record. And I learned a few things putting this space together. Audio quality is super duper important. And if people can't understand your videos or they sound like crap, then they're just not gonna watch them. That's one of the reasons I'm talking to you in here. One to demonstrate that I started in a room kind of like this, which is just a home office. But two, this room is also completely untreated. It's got hardwood floors, just drywall and a hard desk. There's nothing soft, nothing to absorb any sound, and you can hear all the reverberant echoes. Another thing that I've learned was I needed to get a monitor so I could see myself because framing is important. But we're not done with audio yet. I did a bunch of research before I started my YouTube channel because I already had an idea that audio was gonna be really important. And so I bought a nice microphone and a way to use it, but it still didn't sound great. It still sounded like just an on-camera microphone. The problem was the distance. The microphone was still too far away from my face because I thought I could just put the microphone on top of the camera and get good results. Because I had the microphone on the camera on a tripod about five feet away from me and it sounded terrible. The further away you are from your microphone, the worse it's going to sound. This is my portable sound stand. I put my main shotgun microphone up right here. I'm actually talking into it right now on a portable heavy duty mic stand. And then we've got the Mix Pre 3 here and it's being powered by this V-mount battery. And I can see when I need to change the battery because there's a little button on it. That's one of the Bebop batteries. It's a micro V-mount battery. And that thing has, that thing lasts for like a couple months. I, ch I just change it out and charge it just because I have to, or I'll, you know I want to maintain the battery's health, but Powering the Mix Pre 3 over V-mount is one of the smartest things I've ever done. It'll eat through a set of AA batteries in 27 minutes by itself. So the V-mount battery plate that Bebop sells uh, with their micro V-mount batteries is an awesome combination. Earlier in my YouTube career, I set up my whole studio with sound foam, this stuff. And don't waste your time with it. Now, I know that I have videos that say that it works really well. And in fact, it does work really well. But the problem is you need like 90% wall coverage of, you know, exposed surfaces in order for it to sound as good as it does in my studio. I happen to have 90% wall coverage, so it sounds great. In fact, I have a friend who's a voiceover artist and he did voiceover for a commercial that was to be aired on Amazon in a real studio, an actual professional voiceover studio. And they said the sound was too muddy. So he came over to my studio, my home studio. I'm not a sound recordist, I'm not an audio engineer, but he did, he recorded his voiceover session in here, just the way it is now, sent it over to Amazon and they accepted it. Long story short, you need so much of it. And unless you're going for that entire walls, your full studio is covered in sound foam to look like an anechoic chamber, then it's not gonna really do much for your sound. You can't just get 12 squares and call it a day. The other problem is the foam is super inconsistent, especially from AeroZoom. There's a couple problems with the foam they sent me. Uh, number one, the first set of foam has got all discolored from sunlight, UV rays. I mean, as you can see here, the, the dark foam, or the old foam rather, is really obvious. Um, you put so much of it there, it's like, that's all new foam. That all looks great. Uh, but over here, it's just, it looks worn and faded. It wouldn't look so bad if it was all the same color, but uh, so it looks like if I want a really good looking set, I need to replace all the old foam now too, which kind of sucks. And I guess any color that's not like a dark gray color is gonna yellow over time because of the type of foam they use, the polyurethane foam. So it's gonna discolor and look bad compared to new foam. 
Also, the new foam they sent me was half as dense as the first set of foam they sent me. So it was half as effective. It still sounds good in here because of how much coverage I have, but I can't recommend this foam to anybody because it's just, it's inconsistent, it loses its color, and it's, it smells really weird too. If you, if you were gonna sound treat a studio to try and get excellent audio, don't go the sound foam route unless you want your studio to look exactly like this. Now I'm, I'm really pleased with the aesthetic of my studio. I think it looks great, but I, I caution anyone if they're going the sound foam route now because it, it's just been a really frustrating experience. So it's not all bad news. Now I reached out to AeroZoom and explained the issues I was having and they sent out enough foam to replace all the old bad foam that I have that has gotten discolored. And I shared the side-by-side -side issues I was having with the foam because I was gonna review their foam again. And uh, they said, we're sorry, we don't have our own machines to cut foam and that's just the way that it is. Sometimes it's inconsistent. Please publish your review anyways. So at least they stand by their product and they're aware of the issues and they're not afraid of user feedback. So again, my overall notes on sound foam is only get it if you're gonna cover your whole room with it. Uh, if you do, it works great. If you don't, then don't waste your time. Anyways, I had foam and I was gonna use it. I wasn't gonna go do something else and I needed slightly more coverage. So what I have behind me is this whiteboard. I put some foam on a piece of cardboard and then put magnets on the cardboard and then attached the cardboard foam wall to the whiteboard. So now I have a whiteboard and it's part of my backdrop. I've been creating YouTube videos for a while now and my background has always been a little bit cluttered and it was really starting to bother me. So that's why I kind of started going this route of rebuilding my YouTube studio. So being a tech reviewer, I collect a lot of tech and one of the most important parts of my studio is the closet. So the closet didn't have enough shelves when I first got it, basically. So I went to Home Depot and I cut up some two by fours here. Some two by fours and I got some shelves. Little trick, if you go to Home Depot with measurements in hand, they'll actually cut all the pieces for you for like a really small fee. So I went with measurements in hand and I cut up a whole bunch of extra shelves and I added space to keep room for all the tech that I collect and need to keep on hand for other reviews and stuff. We've got a whole bunch of gimbals, three there, and then there's another one down here somewhere. C-stands, lights, lights, cameras, lights. Um, there's lights down here, lots of lights. I could probably do to get rid of some of the stuff, but I'm kind of a hoarder. And you need to have a lot of storage space because you, if you just put it on the floor, you run out of floor space really quick, especially with light stands, tripods, microphone stands, C-stands, boxes of things that you're reviewing other various things. You run out of floor space really fast. Now the whole lack of floor space problem didn't really present itself until I started to learn about lighting. Lighting is super important. Now right now I'm just being lit by the incandescent lights that are in my master bathroom. And I mean, sunlight is better than no light. But once you learn that with a little bit of practice lighting things, you can change the whole tone of the scene and you can make things look so much better when you're in control. So you'll probably wanna cover up all your windows and then just light everything artificially. In addition to that, when you're controlling your own lighting and you're not relying on a window for sunlight, then you can record at any time of day. You don't have to wait for the sun to go down or you don't need to wait for that perfect time at two o'clock when the sun comes through the window and hits you just right. Learning how to light and how to control the light is super important. And once you learn that, you're gonna to wanna to get light stands and C stands, and then your floor space just disappears. So something that I'm actually really, really pleased with are these newer wall light stands. They're like 50, 60 bucks a pop, and they extend out to 50 or so inches. I have like one, two, three, four, five, six lights that I usually use in these videos. I have two lights on this wall clamp thing, and then I have two lights on this wall clamp thing, then I've got my main key light and huge parabolic softbox on the other one. So they hold a ton of weight, they're very maneuverable, they can move in any direction, up, down, to the side, and they extend out to like 50 inches. So if you are considering getting a C-stand just for a home office, 
I recommend you get a C stand because C stands are awesome. And if you ever want to go not in the same exact place in your home office, then get a C stand, but get the wall stands because you can just drill them into the walls. You can hang lights over your computers and stuff or wherever your setup is going to be. Uh, very useful, very happy with it. It's cleared up a ton of floor space. And I'm even using a light as my table here. Now I can't really hang this one off the wall, so I'm stuck with that. That's really what my home studio build out comes down to. But mostly remember that I started in a room just like this. I didn't have all the fancy lights and microphones and things like that. I just had a camera, an idea, and a passion. And you can do it too. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate if you hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.